Hey everybody, welcome back to Game Bytes, our show about creating video game assets. This video is part two of a longer conversation we had about the making of Open Sesame HD. If you haven't watched part one, you can go ahead and click the card in the top right here. But if you've already watched it, of course you can continue to watch this video. But don't, don't you dare watch this video if you haven't watched part one. So let's talk a little bit about how we brought everything together in Engine. So for this project, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we used Unity. Uh, it's a, a very, very common popular game engine that people like to use. One of the other ones that's very common is Unreal Engine 4. Uh, for this particular project, we decided to go with Unity, even though it might have made sense to go with Unreal just because of the like the, the lighting. It's very easy to get right in Unreal because out the box, they, they have a lot of different parameters for posts, processing and things like that. But in our case, we knew we could still reach that that benchmark in Unity for the visuals. And we also have people who are programmers that helped us out with this, and uh, they were familiar, they work in Unity. So we just decided, let's make this work in Unity. We tried to modernize everything. So we added in effects, we added in torch lamps, uh, four of them on the sides, the left and the right sides of the room. Those were not in the original game. There was no flames in the original game. There was no spotlight in the original game. There was no, uh, Cheerleader confetti. Omni throwing confetti up <laughs> yeah. in the air. There's the original scene is so bare in comparison now that there we have these two things to look at. It's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, and again, we didn't want to do something that felt totally different. This was let's kind of push this with what technology we have and make it fit the scene. And sure, uh, directively this could be seen as a turn off charts like you're supposed to just continue down the straight line and you're taking a left or a right but we felt it really helped provide more insight into the character's mind because uh wes is probably full of himself <laughs> and he's probably always thinking there's some sort of audience or spotlight on him because everything's about him right um, plus so there's, it there's like the idea of he's kind of making a fool of himself and so it's it's almost like the game is making fun of him at that point yeah. with the confetti because it's sure. sort of like there's confetti but there's not a lot of it there used to be a lot of it <laughs> and i dialed it back on purpose because i wanted it to feel pathetic <laughs> so yeah it also just it fits this universe so well like why is there confetti in this ancient underground castle dungeon why are the flames on why is there a spotlight what's happening and then like the doors open and the moment's over and you're like oh okay we're moving on yeah i mean why is there a door that opens via dance in the first place you know yeah sure yeah i had to continuously tell on the during the process of this uh video to not think about it <laughs> yeah i like <laughs> thinking really deeply about the logistics of things yeah and that's good like that's good that's really good that's definitely something you should do a lot of people do i love to do it as well but sometimes you know you gotta just turn your brain off and enjoy stuff and this was one of those instances for like it just <laughs> it just made it really hilarious that <laughs> that i mean in our heads, in our lore, like this is all just happening in Wes's mind, and it's in the player's point of view only. Like Duster's probably not seeing the f the flames, you know, torching up to the ceiling, uh, <laughs> or else he would probably look to the left and be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just a fun experiment. It kind of feels like that scene in Ratatouille where Emil is trying to explain to his brother what it's like to experience like these nuances of flavor, and then like the 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 background like the the alley that they're in kind of fades into black and there's just all of these mm -hmm. sparks and fireworks that happens and it's it's obviously not really there but it just adds this level of juiciness to the animation yeah um, it's <laughs> it's in that case it's theater in this case you know cinema we're, we're just trying to add like a reason to do this in the first place you know it'd be fun to totally just do a one-to-one -one verbatim translation of the original game but it'd be funner if we could make it more of what it was aiming to be and that it couldn't do whether it be the technology or the their time constraints or whatever they were dealing with back then the particular the, the way that this room in particular is lit uh it made it difficult to get detail out of the floor and we wanted the floor to feel like clay the normal map for the the floor had to really be dialed up so that it, the detail would come through. 
But if you change yeah. the angle of the lighting, like if you rotate the camera, it's insane how how much normal data is in that normal map. I think you described it as a war zone or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the light was like very low, you would be able to catch some of that normal information. You'd be able to see some of that really gritty war zone clay stuff. Um, but in this case, we had the light spotlight coming from above. And so it really wasn't picking up much at all. So what we had to do is, you know, be a little more cinematic about it. We had to push the normal intensity. We had to push up the clay. And so if you look at it from literally like any other angle besides the camera angle and the lighting angle, um, it's it's pretty gnarly stuff, but it's, um, it fits the scene and it doesn't overpower things. You know, you're not looking at a, a nasty, muddy floor. You're looking at the characters and they're the focal point. So I think it worked in that regard. Yeah. Was the floor normal map something based on the photos that you took of the clay that you had on hand? Yeah, so that was a... We've, we've done a couple of techniques uh, throughout our time on this project with getting clay to look like clay. Number one technique is the one that a lot of uh, AAA studios do. It actually became really uh, modern after, I think it was Star Wars Battlefront 2 looked so good at the time. Uh, and the way that they got it to look so good was photography. So we took the same approach. We grabbed clay, we sculpted it on all these crazy different shapes, and we took photography of that and then translated that into uh, normal map data and translated that basically into, into the game. So um, in uh, Substance Painter, we were doing painting by, by stylus or you know digital <laughs> digital hand <laughs> um, just to accent certain areas and make it uh, further than what we had captured in the composited photos but yeah it definitely helped push things a little bit closer to our final result by having photo reference and knowing how to break it down and use it properly oh a uh, little bit of insider trivia uh, when the when the actual sesame door uh, opens up it's mouth and laughs uh omni's got his laugh in there <laughs> yeah the audio is uh, partially me laughing slowed very much down to a much lower pitch mm -hmm. so that just about wraps up the process for this video i hope you enjoyed just getting a little bit of insight into how we created this little celebration of mother three and um hopefully we get to do a little bit more stuff like this in the future like we said we're going to eventually talk about duster in another video so hope you're looking forward to that but uh i guess thanks both of you for uh, participating in this project it was great to have you on board for this Kara, especially because this is the first time that we got to work with you on anything so it's yeah. been it's been fun having an animator a real animator you guys have been amazing directors and this has been a really amazing product to be a part of like to one be part of a mother three project when, when chris originally approached me and like said it was a mother three project i was like oh i'm here and i'm on board immediately <laughs> yeah that was the best part of this this whole project was everybody involved just loves the franchise so it was mm -hmm. it was a no-brainer it was a no-brainer there's there was love put into every single part of this project yeah, and it won't be our last time with Kara. She'll be back. Keep an eye out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Uh, it's been... It, it took us a while to put this out. We've wanted to make it for a while, but uh, I'm glad we finally got it done. As always, you know, we've got all this stuff that uh, YouTubers are supposed to say at the end of videos. Uh, if you like this video, if you're... I mean, you're here at the end of the video, so you must have liked it to some degree. So maybe just leave a like. Hit that little button there because you know youtube likes it when you do that if you really liked it maybe even subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and if you really liked it the <laughs> there's a there's this thing called patreon that every youtuber has um we don't really do a lot with ours it's sort of just like a tip jar so if you have the uh the ability to support creators that you love and you know you like what we're doing maybe throw a, a dollar <laughs> or two toward us or don't you know it's whatever you want so yeah like comment subscribe uh patreon if you want and uh stay tuned for whatever we have in store next because we've got some big things in store i know i like to say that a lot and the reason they haven't come out yet is because they're really really big so we'll see you guys in the next video take care of yourselves cool fuzzy pickles fuzzy, fuzzy pickles, pickles.